hello happy summer hopefully by now all of you that are watching this video are on summer vacation and if not i'm sorry i hope it's coming soon although some of you could be working summer school nonetheless it is summer it has been summer for me for almost a month i don't know where the time has gone but i do feel relaxed this is my first summer not working summer school so i have just been getting things done Anyways, for those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen Langford and I am a pre-K teacher in Florida and I usually do like weekly vlogs, catch you guys up on what we're doing in school, but since it's summer, can't do that. So today's video is going to be about a question that I get very, very often and that is how do I work with my para or tips for how to make the relationship positive when you have a para or an aide in your classroom. So I asked my para for her advice and then I have some advice as well and let's hear it. Okay, so first things first is that I do actually have a lot of experience working with other adults that are in my classroom. I have taught kindergarten where I had a kindergarten para and at one point it was like there was four teachers and one para so it was like maybe an hour and a half that we got each day but that was when I was a brand new teacher and then I've also when I taught first grade I did one year of co-teaching and during that year it was two teachers but it's still similar a lot of the same things go together because that's you'll hear, that's my tip, that everyone is equal. Then also I've taught summer VPK, which has two teachers in it usually, and you have to collaborate together during that summertime. And then finally, now the position I'm in with the pre-K, that's VPK, as well as ESC students combined. I have two paras, well I'm supposed to have two paras. This last year was a little, a little shaky in that department, but hopefully this year coming up, I'll be back to two paras. So I have a lot of experience with this. I have a lot of things I've learned along the way and I'm hopeful that these things are going to help you. My plan in this video is that I'm going to give you my top three things that I think help build that relationship with your para to help your classroom run smoothly. And then also I'm going to share what my para told me, which is kind of like fishing for compliments I felt. <laughs> but nonetheless, her three things that she recommended that makes her feel comfortable in our classroom and our relationship. I do want to start by saying that kindergarten time I was a brand new teacher and I had a para in there and I struggled at that time. Not because I didn't get along with her or anything like that but she honestly was more experienced than I was. I was coming in this like I think I was 21, 22 maybe. I don't even know. Very young and she was older and she had been a kindergarten para for years so obviously she knows more than I even knew, even though I had the college degree. So during that time, I definitely struggled the most, but I think I learned the most during that time. Okay, let me stop rambling. Anyways, here we go. My top three things that I think are important. Number one should hopefully come as no surprise, but respecting each other as teachers. I mean, yes, I have the title as the teacher, and yes, that comes along with a lot more responsibility, things that maybe are on my to-do list that might not be on my parents' to-do list. I just, I respect her as an adult and as a professional and obviously we're lucky in where we are that I, I know her, but that first year that I was working with her, I knew her within the school, but I didn't know how to work with her, but I just immediately gave her that respect and allowed her to have an opinion on things and discussion on things and I wasn't just like, this is what you're gonna do, this is what I'm gonna do, go do it. That won't work, <laughs> that's not good. That's the same as telling a kid the same thing, you know, you just gotta, you gotta build that relationship up and I'm very lucky that my para, Miss Sam, and I are very good friends and we have a relationship outside of just the para relationship, but you don't have to have that either. You just have to be respectful. You have to allow them to feel important in the classroom. So that's my number one. My number two is how to get that respect is clear communication. And this is the part that I learned the most from when I taught kindergarten because it was really hard for me to communicate because I didn't even know what I wanted to do myself because I was brand new and maybe I thought this was a good idea, but then as a new teacher you try and you're like scratch that and then sometimes that as a teacher you might not feel as comfortable because you're supposed to know it all you know you're supposed to be the one in charge 
but you might fail. Like you might do something wrong in front of your paras and they might do something wrong in front of you and that's okay if you build that respect. So all of these kind of go together, but nonetheless, communication. Not just in the fact that like, not just the communication and the fact that like how you talk to someone, I think that one kind of falls more on that respect. Like not demanding her to do things or him if you have a male para. But communication is like clear communication upfront communication and what I mean by that is like she knows exactly what our schedule is day to day and if something is going to change in the schedule we talk about it together we talk about I don't know like oh pictures are at this time so I was thinking about doing circle time after we go to pictures and then before maybe just doing some songs what do you think and then she'll say oh yeah that sounds good or maybe she'll be like actually right after breakfast they might need to go to the bathroom so we should probably do bathroom and then we'll go to and then it's like perfect you have someone to collaborate with that might think of something you don't think of because we're not perfect <laughs> so it's if you get the relationship down it's very beneficial because it's like having another helper you know that's actually an adult not a child obviously communicating about the schedule is very important communicating about jobs this one's very very big because in the beginning of the year what i like to do is sit down our district provides us with like we have to give them a schedule of what the paras job is and so depending i have two paras one is for the vpk students and then one is for the esc students so my esc para has to get a schedule turned in with like what kids she's working with during what time so it's basically just like my schedule going down you know like during circle time she will be working with so and so and so and so to help with sitting on the rug and paying attention and fidgets and all the things um or during transitions you know she is in charge of these two students at all times holding their hands like we have to be very specific in that it's very specific but it's not specific enough to like the every day like for small groups you know we do small groups a lot for that time i allowed her input, I, I drew on things that I knew that she enjoyed doing, you know, like phonemic awareness. I obviously have more understanding of that skill, so I'm gonna take that skill in my group. Letters and sounds, she feels completely confident with that, and she likes to do that, and she even, I could be like, okay, I want you to work on letters and sounds, find something that you wanna do, and we would go over it together. But if you're not quite there yet, or maybe, Maybe even your para doesn't want that kind of responsibility because I've had that too. Like, they don't want to do all that. They just want you to tell them what to do so they don't have to think about it. And during that time, you have to be able to communicate effectively. So that would mean being very specific. Like, this is what you need to do. This is the beginning. This is the end. This is how I want the papers. If you can grab these papers, all that. And it's tricky because sometimes what you're thinking in your head might not come out through your words or sometimes something might happen in the classroom that you don't really agree with, but you have to have that respect and to be able to talk about it. You can't just let things build up and not say anything. The other part that kind of goes with like step two or top two of communication is also like there's going to be parts of communication with like parents, let's say, or even student behaviors, things like that that you have to communicate with your para on what she's comfortable with and what you're comfortable with. For me, I feel like I'm more comfortable being the one who communicates with parents about anything that's behavior related or grade related or academic related. But also, Miss Sam doesn't want to do that either. She she doesn't want to talk to the parents about, oh, Johnny did da 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 today, you know, like then they're going to ask a question and maybe she's not ready to really answer it cuz she wasn't really a part of it. There's just all those things. So up front, you just have to communicate with your para what things you're gonna be in charge of and what things they're gonna be in charge of. So the number three one, I think that really helps in our relationship, kinda of touched on it a little bit in communication too, was using their skills wisely. If, for, I'm gonna go back to Miss Sam because this is my most recent. Miss Sam is super crafty, like over the top crafty. You guys have seen it. and. I let her do those things because that's what brings her joy and it's something that needs to be done anyways and it's one thing off my plate. So I allow her to look up the play center um, art craft and let her do whatever she wants. I don't care. It's still an art craft. I might say, you know, oh, they need to work on cutting skills or oh, you know, they really need to work on like shapes. So can you do something that has shapes with an art craft? Nonetheless, and then she'll do it or parent gifts like <laughs> She'll be like sending me all the pins on Pinterest of all the things that she wants to do. 
Yes, that's great because guess who's the one doing it? She is. So why should I be like, oh, you have to do this and have to do that. It might not make it as enjoyable for her, but if it's something that she likes and she picked out and we talked about together, she might be more likely to enjoy it. You just have to work together and find the things that interest you, that you wanna do, and then do it. Not to say there's not gonna be jobs that you have to do, no matter what, like changing diapers. I mean, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure nobody really wants to do that, but it's gotta get done. Okay, so switching targets. Obviously, I talked a lot about my top three. Miss Sam sent me her top three, and they're just very brief, and they kinda correlate, so hopefully it's helpful to you. They actually really do correlate. They're like almost the same, which I love, because I actually planned mine ahead of time and asked her to send me hers, and then she sent it, and I sent mine, and they were very similar. It just shows that they're very important. Her number one was respect, just like mine. So what she said in terms of respect is that it's I allow her opinion in things, which I've said a million times. She says that that's like her favorite thing. She likes that she doesn't come to work and feel like she's kind of like told what to do and doesn't get to say anything like, oh, you need to go do this right now or you need to go out there. It's like, yes, it's a job, but we don't wanna be treated that way by our principals either. There's certain things, obviously, like, oh, you gotta do report cards for the older kids, you know? We have to do it, no matter what. We can't get out of it, even when we don't like it. But then there's other things that we do get choice in as teachers, so providing the same thing for her. Number two, she said her favorite part about working with me specifically, the organization and the schedule. She said that it makes us working together so much smoother that there is a schedule. She knows exactly what's coming next. Nothing is a surprise. It helps her plan for her day as well. And she also said like being organized and knowing where everything is, which by the way, I let her do a lot of that kind of stuff too because she's the one that's might be getting out the art supplies or getting these things out. So of course, like we're gonna organize together in the beginning of the year, but she knows where everything is, sometimes more than I do. <laughs> and she, that's important to her, so. Maybe it's important to your parents. And then number three, she said, this one actually really surprised me, but it makes sense because I feel the same way when I'm working in a group of teachers. But she said that she really appreciates that I give her credit for the things that she does. So for instance, like I said, she is super crafty, all those things, and I can think of so many examples, especially on this YouTube channel, but even at school, we're like, She's doing the bulletin board and I could easily be like, when somebody walks by, oh my gosh, your bulletin board's so cute. I could be like, oh, thank you. But I don't, I say, oh my gosh, thank you. Miss Sam is amazing. She did all of that, can you believe it? You know, some, I like give credit for those things. Same with like Halloween, those costumes that she made. Did I help paint randomly sometimes here and there? Did I help with the graduation decorations? Did I help with the coming up with some of the ABC crafts? Yes, but who executed it? She did, so I gave her the credit because she deserves the credit. So that actually, I loved hearing that from her because I like, it just made me reflect a little bit like, oh, yeah, I do do that and I'm happy that it's helpful to you and you enjoy it and you don't want to leave me because please don't leave me. So that's my advice. I I hope it helps you. It's It's pretty vague, but it's also just people skills and I know that I am very lucky to be working with Miss Sam as my para, and also I have another para for sure coming next year who is going to be just as amazing. She actually used to be a teacher. She's my friend. This is her first year that all of her kids will be back in school, and so she just wants to do something that's not as extreme as teaching. <laughs> and it's crazy. I can't, I'm still shocked that she wants to do it, but it's gonna be so fun. All three of us, we're gonna get along great. It's gonna be a great little trio, and once again, I know how lucky I am to be working with people that I get along with, that I know I can respect and they can respect me and we might make mistakes along the way but we're comfortable with each other to be able to do that. I get it, not everybody has that. I will say that I this year had a brand new para, you know, I had a para that started in November and that was a learning curve. There was the same things, like it wasn't as natural as it was with Miss Sam to know what she wants to do, um, what she enjoys doing, or maybe she would start doing something and I would have to redirect it, but I did it all with respect. And was it as easy? No, it wasn't. It was a learning curve. Throughout the year, we realized that, you know, she really enjoyed like cleaning, which we loved <laughs> because we 
I mean, I guess we like cleaning, but you know, we've had like a million other things on our plate. So we're like, yeah, you want to wipe the tables every day? You want to stack the chairs every day? You want to put out the morning tubs in the morning? Like by all means do it. But it, we didn't know that right away. It took a few weeks to figure that out. See, there was some other things like she was new to doing this job altogether. So dealing with the kids was a learning curve for her, but we, we, as in me and the Sam, are very respectful of that and it was okay. Like she didn't know how to handle certain things and we would just show her and teach her and then over the time she figured it out to do it her way. You know, some of the kids were working on in our classroom a lot of independence and so she would come in not having children, she, never, she didn't have any children, and she would think, oh, they're little, they need help. Natural obviously in the beginning of the year they need a lot of help but by that time not everybody needed the help and so we just had to talk to her about that oh you know these kids probably still need a little bit more help and be very specific like oh this kid probably needs some hand over hand for the beginning and then let them try on their own but these kids over here like they don't need any hand over hand at all you can let them get started and then ask them some questions about what they're doing so once again communication in respectful way and hopefully that helps. I know that was a lot and I'm just sitting on my couch during summer chit-chatting. This is the first summer video. I have a lot of other ideas. I know next week I'm going to do my top 10 Amazon purchases for teachers and I wonder if that'll line up with Amazon Prime Day. Not sure. I'll try to figure that part out for you guys. Uh, and then the week after that I'm going to do top 10 Amazon purchases for kids in the classrooms like toys and things like that and then i have some other videos but i can't even think of them definitely new classroom new school new decorations i am working on a million teachers pay teachers like classroom decorations i mean i'm making them for myself but i'm posting them on there it's going to be boho rainbow theme next year we bought cute borders we have a million other things we need to buy it's going to be very exciting once we do get back but right now summer enjoying it, relaxing. I hope you are enjoying it. We all need this break. All right, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and that notification bell to be notified. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to try to start posting during the school year more on Instagram. Try and build that up a little bit and give you guys some in action day-to-day -day stuff. I wish I could say I was gonna do TikTok, but I just like to watch TikTok. I'm not sure if I'm a TikTok person yet, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thanks guys. Bye.